Imagine this. A single, blinding flash of light, utterly silent and completely invisible, just turned a $30 billion carrier strike group into a sitting duck. No piercing warning klaxon, no frantic incoming missile arc painting across the radar screen, nothing but a focused 150 kilowatt beam that slices through drones, vaporizes missiles, and could very well reshape the entire future of American sea power. China didn't just float another aircraft carrier this week. They powered up a laser system that could make every deck park, every close-in weapon system, CIWS, every single interceptor missile on a U.S. warship feel like yesterday's technology. The U.S. Navy's response? Well, let's just say there's a quiet panic unfolding behind closed bulkheads, and one urgent order echoing through the command centers. Get our own lasers online, and fast, before the vast expanse of the Pacific becomes a shooting gallery where only one side can shoot straight. Stick around, because in the next few minutes, we're going to show you exactly why this 150 kilowatt weapon is so much more than just a bright flashlight, how it completely flips the cost equation of naval combat on its head, and why Helios, Uncle Sam's high-tech answer, might already be too late to prevent the first true laser war at sea. This isn't some theoretical lab prototype, tucked away safely in an engineer's sterile vault. Oh no, China's new system is already bolted firmly to the deck of a Type 071 amphibious transport dock, a vessel that has, crucially, already sailed through the strategically vital Taiwan Strait. Think about that for a second. 150 kilowatts of directed energy. To put that in perspective, that's roughly the equivalent power of 150 standard shopping mall microwave ovens, all focused down into a single, devastating spot the size of a coffee cup. That beam, moving at the literal speed of light, dumps energy so incredibly fast that aluminum skins vaporize instantly, delicate circuit boards fry in a blink, and even fuel tanks can cook off and explode in mere milliseconds. Translation? It doesn't just burn neat little holes, it ignites, obliterates, and destroys whatever it touches with terrifying efficiency. Forget those dramatic, cartoonish Star Wars bolts you see in movies, real high-energy lasers are far more insidious. They're more like an invisible, silent blowtorch, precisely directed and moving at the speed of light. The Chinese unit reportedly bundles multiple fiber laser modules, each one pumping out a few kilowatts of energy, then stitches these individual beams together with incredibly precise adaptive optics. This advanced optical system continuously corrects for atmospheric distortion, ensuring the beam stays tightly focused on its target, even over significant distances. A 150 kilowatt output sits right at that crucial sweet spot where small drones can literally melt and fall apart in under two seconds, and thin-skinned anti-ship missiles start shedding critical control surfaces or experiencing catastrophic internal failures after just five seconds of exposure. The beauty, or perhaps the terror, of a laser isn't just brute force, it's precision. You don't have to vaporize the entire target, you can heat the sensitive seeker head of an incoming missile, blinding its guidance system. You can fry its radar, rendering it useless. Or, you can rupture its fuel line, turning a precision weapon into a falling hunk of metal. You get to choose your failure mode, tailored to the threat. What about range? Officials are tight-lipped, of course, but open physics tells us that 150 kilowatts gives you a kilometer class no escape zone against smaller, plastic drones. That range might be cut roughly in half through humid tropical air, which is a key consideration in the Pacific theater. But here's the truly chilling part. Add a future 500 kilowatt upgrade, already rumored to be under development in PLA Navy labs, and suddenly much larger, more critical assets become vulnerable. We're talking about carrier-borne tankers, airborne early warning, AEW, aircraft, even low-flying harm, high-speed anti-radiation missile, shots. The potential for a laser of that power to disrupt or destroy these assets could fundamentally alter air-sea operations. This isn't just about point defense anymore, it's about denying access and control over vast swaths of airspace. U.S. strategy in the Western Pacific has, for decades, leaned heavily on the immense power and projection capabilities of the carrier strike group. We're talking 70 aircraft, a formidable wall of escort ships, layered missile defenses, and the silent, ever-present threat of a submarine in tow. 
This model works incredibly well when your main worry is a cruise missile that you can detect, track, and shoot down with another expensive missile. But that entire operational model begins to break down, rapidly and catastrophically, when the first salvo isn't a missile at all. When it's silent, costs mere pennies, and arrives at the literal speed of light. Imagine this scenario. China launches a swarm of 10,000 cheap, expendable drones off the coast of Hainan. These aren't meant to destroy, they're meant to overwhelm. They force the US escorts to waste their precious, million-dollar interceptors, one by one, until their magazines are depleted. And then, through the holes created by that economic attrition, China slips a hypersonic carrier killer missile. The laser weapon completely turns that economic equation inside out. China can afford to launch hundreds, even thousands, of cheap drones precisely because it can defend against the return volley for the price of a frozen pizza. Meanwhile, every US destroyer carries, on average, 96 vertical launch system VLS, tubes. When those tubes run dry, that ship, a multi-billion dollar asset, has to crawl back to an ammunition ship for a reload. That reload can take hours in calm seas, and days in a contested strait, leaving it dangerously vulnerable. A laser, however, never needs an ammo barge. It needs fuel, and the Type 071, with its robust turbines, can sip that fuel for days on end, maintaining its defensive posture. This shift from kinetic, finite magazines to virtually infinite directed energy fundamentally challenges the US Navy's operational assumptions in an era of missile saturation and unmanned systems. Quick pause here. What do you think? Do you believe lasers will eventually replace missiles entirely in naval combat, or will the Navy always need traditional interceptors as part of a layered defense? Drop your take in the comments below. And if you're finding this straight to the point breakdown on the next arms race as fascinating as we are, make sure to tap that subscribe button so you don't miss the fallout. Washington, to its credit, isn't sitting still, wringing its hands. The US Navy's direct answer to this emerging threat is called Helios, High Energy Laser and Integrated Optical Dazzler with Surveillance. It operates in the same power band, typically between 60 and 150 kilowatts, but its real genius lies in its hardwired integration directly into the formidable Aegis combat system aboard our Arleigh Burke class destroyers. Helios is designed to do three critical things. It can kill small boats and drones, it can blind enemy sensors, and it can also beam target for traditional SM series missiles, dramatically increasing their accuracy and effectiveness. The first operational deployment of Helios was aboard the USS Preble in 2021, and sailors running combat simulations report impressive results. The turret can engage a target in under 3 seconds from the fire control queue. That's fast enough to swat a rocket out of the sky if the beam holds steady on target. The catch, and it's a significant one, is power. A Burke-class destroyer's four gas turbines are powerful, yes, and they can certainly make Helios happen. But every kilowatt you feed the laser is a kilowatt you can't push to propulsion or to power other critical systems like radar. It's a constant energy balancing act. China's Type 071 faces the exact same physics problem, of course. Yet, according to intelligence reports, PLA Navy engineers are reportedly mounting dedicated diesel generators specifically for the weapon system, meaning they can operate their laser at full power while the ship is stationary, a distinct advantage in a literal ambush scenario, or when defending a fixed position. This highlights the US Navy's urgent need to accelerate its own directed energy weapon, DEW, programs to maintain technological and operational superiority. Let's be honest, raw power, those impressive kilowatt numbers, they're definitely sexy. They grab headlines, but in the brutal reality of modern naval warfare, it's seamless integration that ultimately wins wars. Helios feeds directly into the SPY-1 radar picture, a crucial advantage because a laser, by its very nature, is a line-of-sight weapon. If the Aegis system sees it, Helios can hit it. This deep integration allows for rapid targeting and engagement, leveraging the ship's existing, highly sophisticated sensor suite. Chinese systems, at least the ones we've publicly spotted, appear to be less integrated. They typically sit in an independent turret bolted topside, often with what looks like a Type 347 fire control radar bolted right beside it. It's not yet a full plug-and-play solution. That difference, though seemingly minor, is absolutely massive in combat. 
It means a U.S. destroyer can receive targeting data from an E-2 Hawkeye aircraft operating over the horizon, light up an incoming drone with Helios, and never even bother launching a half-million-dollar evolved Sea Sparrow missile. For China, the laser is still largely functioning as a self-defense tool, a powerful but somewhat standalone addition. For the U.S., it's rapidly becoming a vital component of a sprawling, interconnected kill web stretching hundreds of miles. The gap isn't just about raw power numbers, it's about the plumbing, the data pipes, the cooling lines, the complex combat system code that allows everything to talk to everything else. Close that gap, and Helios becomes far more than just a gimmick. It transforms into a dynamic, adaptable shield for the entire strike group, a critical component in maintaining our technological edge. Both navies, not surprisingly, are already pouring significant resources into next-generation upgrades. General Atomics, a major U.S. defense contractor, just recently shipped a powerful 300-kilowatt solid-state slab laser to the Army, and the beauty of this technology is that it scales directly to shipboard applications. Meanwhile, China's National University of Defense Technology published, and then very quickly deleted, a paper describing beam-combined fiber lasers capable of reaching half a megawatt, or 500 kilowatts. At that kind of power level, you're not just frying small drones anymore. You're putting significant holes in missile fuel tanks through 10 kilometers of humid air. You're taking out larger, hardened targets. This level of power brings brutal engineering problems to the forefront. How do you generate that much electrical power on a ship without compromising propulsion? How do you dissipate the immense waste heat generated by the laser? And how do you maintain beam quality and focus over longer ranges in varying atmospheric conditions? These are incredibly tough nuts to crack, but crack them they will. And when they do, it will fundamentally change naval combat in the same way that steam power changed sailing. Imagine a cruiser, bristling with advanced sensors, parked strategically in the Taiwan Strait, sweeping a 100-kilometer arc with a laser that can kill a supersonic missile every single second. That future, which might sound like science fiction, is closer than most analysts are willing to admit. Both sides are openly talking about operational deployment of these higher-powered systems before 2030. Not every kill in combat has to be explosive, loud, and dramatic. Sometimes, the most effective weapon is one that simply renders the enemy blind or confused. Helios, for instance, carries a sophisticated dazzle mode. This isn't about destroying, it's about disrupting. It can permanently blind electro-optical sensors on satellites, effectively turning multi-million dollar spy assets into useless hunks of metal. It can disable the cameras on recon drones, even temporarily blind pilots' night vision goggles. China's export brochures, interestingly, openly advertise a similar soft kill feature on their own laser systems. In crowded, sensitive waters like the South China Sea, you don't always want to blow up somebody's drone, creating debris and international incidents. Sometimes, you just want it to stop taking incredibly detailed pictures of your flight deck or your ship's maneuvers. Dazzling is a way to skirt escalation. There's no debris, no casualties, just a multi-million dollar unmanned aerial vehicle suddenly turned into a clumsy, blind glider. Expect to see more of these gray zone lasers flashing in contested maritime areas, with each side subtly testing the other's resolve and capabilities without firing a single bullet. It's a new form of non-lethal, yet highly effective, engagement, and it adds another layer of complexity to naval operations. So, is the US Navy truly panicking? Talk privately to Pentagon planners, the ones who truly understand the implications, and you'll hear words like urgent operational need and accelerated fielding. That, my friends, is bureaucrat speak for panic, served with a side of lukewarm coffee. The real fear isn't that China suddenly possesses some magic death ray that renders all US ships obsolete overnight. No, the real fear is that Beijing can afford to spam that ray across hundreds of hulls, across a vast theater of operations, while US budgets groan under the astronomical costs of traditional missile defenses. The paradigm shift we're witnessing is a fundamental move from scarcity to abundance. Abundant shots, abundant targets, and potentially, abundant confusion for the unprepared. Whichever navy rewrites its doctrine, its tactics, and its procurement strategies around the concept of infinite magazines first will own the next skirmish line, and potentially the next war at sea. 
Helios, a dragon named System Full of Promise, still rides on a handful of destroyers. China's 150 kilowatt laser, however, is already out in the gray zone wild, deployed and potentially proliferating. The clock is ticking on who scales first, and it's that ability to scale, not just raw kilowatts, that will ultimately decide the next chapter of naval warfare. The Pacific, that vast, crucial expanse, is no longer just a missile chessboard. It's rapidly becoming a laser lightning field where the price of a mistake, or an engagement, can be as little as 50 cents worth of photons. China has decisively dealt the opening hand with its 150 kilowatt naval laser, a weapon that turns drones into ash and transforms traditional defense budgets into nightmares. The US Navy's answer, for now, sits on the decks of a few Arleigh Burke class destroyers, promising parity, but only if Washington can wire enough power, enough money, and enough sheer political will into the fleet before the next spark ignites. If you found this breakdown useful, insightful, or perhaps a little terrifying, then please, smash that subscribe button so you catch the next flash of insight. And don't forget to let us know in the comments whether you think lasers will make missiles extinct, or simply force them to evolve into something even more formidable. Because in modern naval warfare, the only thing faster than light itself is the speed of change, and that change, my friends, is already here.